The last class of methods we want to talk about for our collections, our arrays in our list, are the combinatorial and iterator methods. Now these are grouped together because the single feature they have in common is they all return something called an iterator. An iterator is much like an array or a list with the exception that as you go through the values <clears throat> they're consumed. And the advantage here is that you can keep things that would potentially be very large you keep them inside of an iterator and they don't have to consume that much memory. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a Scala instance here and I want to make a ray, an array that we can start playing with. So let's call it nums. It's an array and I am just going to be <clears throat> boring to start with and give the numbers 1 through 5 inside of this array. The first method that we want to look at is called combinations. And combinations takes a single argument for how many. So if you've done any combinatorics type work in math, you've probably heard of an expression like 5 choose 3 and for that you are trying to figure out how many different ways you can choose three elements from a group of five. That's basically what this is going to do but it doesn't just figure out how many of them there are it gives back all of them to you. So we have five elements there and using that example I can say I want all the combinations of three that I can pull out of that five. <clears throat> now the result that this provides to us is a little bit different than what we've seen before. It's a an iterator of arrays and if you're familiar with when you do this choose operation, you know that there can be lots and lots of possibilities, which is why an iterator is used here. You don't want to create all of those different combinations at once and fill the entire memory of your computer. We can go through them one at a time and then throw them away as we're done with them. So how can we view these? Well, we could use the method we looked at before, a for each and then I could print out each of the different combinations. <laughs> okay, except arrays don't print nicely. I guess I could change this to a, uh, to a list, but even better is we can use one of the other methods that we've talked about. And so we'll print line out a dot mk string with a comma. And I have three open parentheses, so I need three closed parentheses. And there we go. So we had one, two, three, four, five. One way to choose three is one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, one, three, four, one, three, five, etc. And so this gives us back an iterator that allows us to see every single possibility. We had an iterator up here called res zero. We can recall that. If you wanted to go through these more programmatically one at a time, it turns out the iterators have a next method and so I can repeatedly call next on my iterator and get through all the values. When I get to the last one there won't be another one and you can ask the collection if it has next and if it does then you can get one. At a certain point here I'll run out though so then when I call has next it says false and I really shouldn't call next again. So combinations is one of these uh, methods that gives us back an iterator Another one is called grouped. So to demonstrate grouped, I probably want something that's a little bit larger. So we're going to use tabulate and I'm going to make 15 elements. And to keep it simple, I will just use each element is its own index. Grouped, let's group them in threes for each, <laughs> we're going to need this print line that we had up here. Open parentheses, boom. Okay, so grouped by threes gave us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we got an iterator. Once again, if I hadn't done the for each in the print, we wouldn't see all of this. It would just say non empty iterator. And each of the elements. In, these, in this iterator is a grouping of three values from the array. It happened that our array was a multiple of three. What if we do a grouping that's not a multiple? 
Well, then the first ones are full. So we get four, four, and four. And then the last one gets however many is left over at the end. So that's what grouped does for us. The init's array, or the init's method, returns a iterator again. And the iterator that it returns is all of the initial uh, calls that you would get if you were to go through the collection. Now remember that init's, the init call, so if I do nums.init, and it gives you everything but the last element. So this iterator winds up giving you the whole thing, followed by everything but the last one, followed by everything but the last two, the last three, etc., until you get all the way down to one element um, and then zero elements. Okay. Um, a close relative of combinations is permutations. And this is part of the reason why we kept nums so small. Instead of calling init's, let's call permutations. And so this is going to give us, if you don't remember what a permutation is, a permutation is a different ordering of the same elements. This is, this is going to give us every possible reordering of our five values. Now this prints out quite a bit of stuff. If you don't remember, the number of permutations grows as the size factorial. So because we have five elements, this should have printed out 120 lines for all of the different possible orderings that we can have for the collection uh, in question here. Another method, and in some ways this one is similar to grouped, is called sliding. And sliding takes an argument, and so I'll do a sliding of three. And what this does is, remember grouped get, would have given us the first three followed by, and because nums only has five elements in it, it would have given us just the next two. But sliding advances one element at a time and gives you groups of threes, but each one has an overlap. So the one, two, three, and then we get the two and the three again, and the four, and then the three and the four again, and the five. And so you can kind of picture it as it's like a little frame that slides down through the collection. And in this case, each frame that we pull off has three elements inside of it. The last method that's in this group is actually a counterpart to init's. Remember, init's gives you the things at the beginning minus the end. You can also ask for all the tails, which basically gives you all the collections that you would get if you strip off the one element from the front repeatedly, as opposed to init's, which gives you each time where you strip off one element from the back repeatedly. So those are a number of different methods you can use to solve problems. There are a number of interesting things you can do with these. One other thing that's worth, notice, that's worth noting here is if you did want to create an array or a list off of these things, the iterator does have a to list and a to array method. So you could make these things more concrete. You just have to be careful because, for example, if we did permutations dot to array, if I have very many elements in, in this array, we're going to consume a whole heck of a lot of memory in doing so. So I would not want to do that on that longer list that I made that had 15 values in it because 15 factorial is more than the amount of memory that I have in, in this computer. So. Uh, that covers the combinatorial slash iterator methods, um, and, and hopefully you can think about how you would use these for certain types of problems. In particular, combinations and permutations give you the ability to approach a number of different problems that you, at this point, would have a hard time doing without them.